Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Uh, okay, we're here. back. We're live with Jay Griffin. We are so excited to be here. Thank you so much for coming down, Commissioner. Nice to see you on a Monday morning. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Good to see you, too. Uh, Good to hear from you, Marco. And Marco's here. Marco's here by phone from ProVision Solar in, in uh, Hilo, and uh, he's, the, um, he's the guy who organized this show, so I have to give him credit. Credit goes to you, Marco. Well, we are saving the best for last. We oh, had no, uh, no, no. Uh, Chair Randy Awase <laughs> I'm not gonna fall four for weeks that. ago. We had uh, Jenny Potter <laughs> two weeks ago, and now we're rocking with Dr. Jay Griffin. So uh, truly saving the best for last. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to let you lead off because I know you have questions for Jay. So, Jay, thank you so much for being with uh, Jay and Jay and Marco, JJ and M, on this uh, Aloha Monday here in December a beautiful uh, 2018. So, yeah, the questions, of course, never end. And I guess my first one will be kind of a broad one. What are your principal takeaways from being on the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission for now one and a half years as I, as I count the calendar? Sure, thanks, Marco. And first, yeah, I, certainly not the best for last. You, we've been fortunate. This is the three-part <laughs> series. Um, uh, I know Randy and Jenny were, were happy to participate, so hopefully I can carry their uh, the good work that they've done. <clears throat> well, you always have in the past, so. Oh, no, no. Okay, so key takeaways. You know, I can think probably, let me take, take that in two parts. One, I can say uh, organizationally, the commission itself, um, since I've come on, really I think, I mean, we're, we're in a much better place, certainly than when I started on staff in 2012. And really, that's the legacy of, of well, frankly, I'd say two people, uh, former Chair Marita and our current chair. Uh, the reorganization of the commission started a while ago. Um, we had the ability to hire uh, up to our present number of staff, but we were roughly at about half there when I started. Uh, we moved uh, to a different agency under, you know, we're attached to DCCA now. I think that has helped our internal operations so a lot of that uh, happened prior to Randy coming in, and then he really helped with that transition. So now we're in a place where we do have the autonomy that, uh, uh, administrative autonomy that uh, stat, uh, statute says that we should have, um, and we've hired up to close to a uh, full complement of staff, and you know that's, that's really been his uh, consistent uh, effort on that to make that happen during his term. So on, and, uh, to round that out, you know, our, we have a, a, a very uh, energetic, enthusiastic staff, uh, great people to work with. We're very fortunate uh, uh, from that respect. So I think that's takeaway one, where we've built momentum as an organization, and I think we've also built momentum through carrying out our workload and a lot of our decisions over the past, particularly in the past year. Uh, we've dealt with, I believe, at one point we had, 11, I think it was 10 or 11 different rate cases simultaneously. We've um, managed all those within statutory timelines and typically uh, issued our decisions on time or ahead of time. Same with- You mean, you mean concluding things? Correct. Making decisions? Correct, yeah. Uh, similar with a lot of the major power purchase agreements that have come before us in that time frame, as well as some of the key policy dockets. So we've really built momentum in our decision making. Mm, that's great. Jennifer if talked I could about follow that. Follow up on that uh, as well. And thank you for that answer. What has surprised? This kind of two-part question. What has surprised you the most, Jay? And what what have you found to be the kind of the most challenging or disappointing in your year and a half there? Well, there's no disappointments. <laughs> uh, Working in a, in, a, in, a, in a government agency, that that is uh, well, I'm, I'm speechless. No, 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 no. Uh, no well, um, well, Marco, let me offer this. I learned this in the service. There's two kinds of people in the service. There's one kind that likes his duty station, and the other kind that doesn't. <laughs> so Jay is obviously the kind of guy who likes his duty station. I'm very happy. This is one of the best jobs I've ever had. So All right. I'm very happy with that, and as well as the people that I work with. Um, the most surprising. Look, I, I think um, I think I've said this before. I think the the workload that we have on a lot of our regulated entities that are outside you know, outside of the typical, typical public view. Um, during this time frame, we've, we've reviewed and approved the merger with Hawaiian Telecom Cincinnati Bell. 
uh, a ton of work, day-to-day -day work with a lot of our smaller uh, motor carriers. Uh, the amount of work that goes into some of the rate cases for the small water and, and sewer utilities. So just, I think a lot of the work that goes on behind the scenes, uh, I mean, my view on that, it, for every decision we make, it's really important to somebody. Um, so, you know, I think we still have to keep that attention to detail and kind of focus in these areas that don't necessarily get the spotlight. And what I, it's, it's just a lot of work there. Um, I think we're, we're continuing to do better and, and see it through. Uh, so that's probably, that, that continues to surprise. Uh, disappointing, um, I don't know, I, I'm, I joked earlier, I, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm optimistic about the progress that we're making. I think we, have, we still, like anyone or any organization, still have room to improve. Um, and um, I, but I, I lose sleep over a lot of decisions, but I can't say I've, I, uh, there's nothing that is a vast disappointment to me yet. Mm -hmm. now, I have some questions that, that, that you've touched on. You've moved, and then you've moved back. I mean, you have a new, you have a new facility now, yeah? Um, what's, what's the difference between where you were and where you are? So no, I'm, I didn't bring that up earlier. Actually, in, yeah, in the middle of all this, we've also remodeled our, yeah. our office space. So we've actually still uh, stayed in the present building, but uh, about half of our staff had to move into an annex. And now we have the two, uh, the two floors of our building fully remodeled. We have a beautiful hearing room. Uh, happy to host you guys and, and take a view of that. Uh, it's, it's actually the old, it's a historic, I mean, it's a historic building, but it was actually the original hearing room from the commission, so beautiful high ceilings. Uh, impressive room, and we've had a number of our stakeholder conferences there, so we're, I think we're, we're in great shape there also. So we have more room for a conference, like more room for more people more to More room that we host these things internally, but it's also really good to have all of our staff under the same roof. Mm -hmm. We, they, I think, because um, it happened during my time on staff that we started moving people over the annex, and you know, that physical separation, it, it's, it has real effects, so I think it's good to see everyone back together. Coming back together. It's yeah. easy to go grab somebody and talk and when you need to. Yeah, you know, I was asking you before we started about uh, I'm n noting that the circuit court and the district court, um, at least in Honolulu, are, are going to be, in fact, it must be statewide, because uh, the Chief Justice, you know, arranged it, um, are, are doing electronic filing now. Are you doing electronic filing? If I want to so file have, a, yeah, something we, in a we have a process to do that, I think. Let me take two tacks on this. One, we're, we're, as a result of the audit, you know, our document management system was uh, harshly criticized. Uh, I think it was mostly warranted. Uh, we're, re, we're taking a, re, a revisit of uh, overhauling that system, um, and that's gonna be one of the initiatives that the commission, I think we have a, a solid plan for how to improve that system, and, and part of it is a better e-filing system so that that capability exists now but I would say it's still not um, necessarily that efficient in how the e-filings are handled mm -hmm. so most people are still filing a lot of stuff so it's optional you can find a, 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 a litigant yeah. I can file either way yeah you know and I was I was saying too that uh, you know that there's a trend in this country to uh, provide tools electronic tools to regulators and, and judicial organizations where they can take electronic filings that are scanned in and they can examine them electronically and look for keywords and citations, even arguments. They can break it down better than a table of contents or index would break it down. Um, is, this, is this in the picture? Do you have dreams and hopes at 3 o'clock in the morning about this guy? No, I was, I was joking with you earlier that he's trying to automate our staff and commissioners out of a, a job here. <laughs> uh, Nobody wants uh, to do that. <laughs> no, no. Uh, look, I, th I think uh, you know, any of these tools that can help, particularly some of these files, are massive. We just uh, received the Helco rate case for Hawaii Electric Light Company on Friday. Um, it was three boxes of binders. Um, so, you know, I think searching, particularly trying to search through filings like that, any of these tools that can help, you know. Save you time. Yeah, Save the staff time, too, yeah. So I wanted to ask you about chemistry, too. 
here you are talking about energy. <clears throat> I'm a PUC commissioner, and I'm asking about chemistry. But it's not the chemistry you think. Yeah, I <clears throat> so you used to have three people there. Okay, we now, still do. now <laughs> let's try. Yeah, it's all it's all going to change in January. So my first question is how how has the arrival of uh, Jennifer Potter changed the chemistry? Uh, my second question is uh, how will the departure of Randy Uwasi change the chemistry? Sure. Uh, Look, our, we have a great working relationship with the three commissioners. I think we've all said that now on the show. Uh, but I mean, that, that's that's very much the case. I think it's reflected in in kind of the, the as I was alluding earlier, the momentum decisions, you know, the kind of the timely decision making. Uh, so I think we have a great working relationship with very complementary skills. If you look, you know, Jenny and I come from Know, much more of an energy background, but probably a little different focus in, in areas. Randy, you know, did not have that when he came on, but I think our, our skill sets are very complementary and we've gotten along very well. Uh, so she's been a great addition. Uh, Randy, the, you know, the state and the commission have been very fortunate to have his leadership. Um, <laughs> well, let me, let me transpose that into January 1st, okay? Randy's going Randy's to retire at the end of the year. It's, uh, what is it? it's really a week away in terms of business days. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you know there, there's nobody, unless, you know, I don't know what happened recently, but there's nobody appointed to, to succeed him. So here we go, January 1st. It's actually January 2nd. <laughs> um, there's two of you now, not three. Um, what happens? How does that change the chemistry? Uh, how do you how do you operate? Because you're a senior, does that mean you're sort of de facto acting chair? Is that what it means? No, no. no. So a few things to clarify. Yeah, there's. Uh, I, you know, Randy is about to, uh, the. I think his last official day is uh, December 28th. Um, I'm not sure where things stand in name or replacement. I mean, the commission can go on with two commissioners. Uh, when I came in, my seat was vacant uh, for I think it was about six weeks. So you know, we still have, we, it's still majority decision making, um, but I'm I'm less I think that's less of a concern. I think we have a good handle on our workload um, and where things stand, and you know I think so. I think there's not that's not necessarily as potentially as disruptive. I think the mm -hmm. challenge is that the. The chair is the designated uh, executive of the agency, so a lot of our administrative functions all uh, require the chair to you know, sign off on things. And so, I, I mean, if there's a vacancy, I, I would as I assume that you know the governor would still have to appoint somebody. You know, seniority is not the. Only, I mean, they would make a choice from oh. who's sitting. Okay, well, to continue on chemistry, Marco. After this break, you know, you might consider asking Jay about his hopes and dreams about Randy's successor and see if he will answer that. <laughs> we take a short break. We'll be right back with Jay Griffin, PUC Commissioner. Marco Mangelsdorf joins us from uh, ProVision Solar in Hilo. We'll be right back. Hello,皆さん,こんにちは。ThinkTechHawaii Aloha. And Aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with uh, Jay Griffin, PUC Commissioner, uh, and Marco Mangelsdorf, who's now got some questions he wants to pose here in the second half of our show. Marco? So speaking of chemistry, since I've been toiling away with my chemistry set here listening to you guys talk about chemistry, <laughs> what uh, qualities and qualifications would you like to see, Jay Griffin, in your next colleague on the commission? 
Sure. Uh, you know, the, the, I think kind of the resume level qualifications are, I mean, that's, that's foundational. Um, you know, somebody that, that understands what the commission does, some, you know, good knowledge, working level knowledge of the current issues before us. Uh, but I think, pro I mean, I, I would say one of the first and foremost is, I mean, strong commitment to public service. I, mm -hmm. you know, I joked earlier this, you know, I, this is one of the best jobs I've ever had, but it's definitely not for everyone. Um, we're in the public eye all the time. You know, you know that you feel the weight of the decisions that we make. Um, you know, that it carries a lot of responsibility, and I think there's, there's a lot of other opportunities out there that um, you know may be appealing to people. So mm -hmm. you're working, that, you're working hard. Yeah, I mean the the workload is is significant and and not expecting to go away. I mean, like I said, just we got three binders dropped off on us on Friday, and and those rate cases. You know, these are decisions that affect the life of of every person and business on the islands and the the counties and communities that. Um, that are involved, mm -hmm. and you know, we go out to hearing, and we certainly hear that. So, you know, these are these are all things that weigh heavily on you as you're, you know, taking all this information. And so, you know, I, 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 you know, I think that is probably more central than any specific set of skills. I think I've observed. I probably was a bigger proponent of more background in the area, but I've watched Randy come up to speed really quickly. Um, and kind of and learn, you know, uh, how to judge. I mean, he, he trusts the staff, and and so I think, you know, I think people that are uh, that are quick learners and motivated to be in the position, I think, uh, can certainly come up to speed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, of course, the governor has the opportunity, the the power, to uh, to appoint somebody as a commissioner and the chair commissioner. Or he can appoint one of the existing commissioners as the chair and appoint the, the new person as, uh, you know, one of the non-chair commissioners, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, how do you feel about that? I'll tell you my feeling, and I'm interested in yours. I feel that all things being equal, that somebody who's been sitting on the commissioner is, is probably a better candidate for chair. That's my feeling. You can react or not. <laughs> uh, look, I'm... Um like, I think we're all anxiously awaiting the decision. I, you know, I think the governor's the gov and the governor and the governor's staff track record on appointments to the commission. I have a biased perspective on it. Have been good, uh, and I expect that you know expect nothing less with the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in terms of um, we we ought to spend a little time before we run out of time to talk about um, you know the dockets that are going to be powerful. Ooh, that's a terrible double entendre. <laughs> I'm going forward, and the one that comes to mind first is is the Pacific based, uh, I'm rather performance based uh, uh, regulation and, and rates, I suppose. Um, so, what what in general is before you, and uh, wh what's the magnitude of this issue? How is it how is it likely to affect the energy landscape and the state going forward? Sure. Uh, so let me give the quick overview of where we currently stand in the docket and what we've stayed out, uh, uh, sketched out. We always set this up as a two-phase process, and we and Jesus started in. Let me get this wrong. May is our opening order. Uh, we intended to take this year to go through the first phase. We've gone through three different workshops. Uh, one reviewing the existing regulatory framework. Another. Uh, you know, kind of critiquing that. Uh, another one looking at goals and outcomes and metrics. Um, so we've been through those. We've, re we've received briefs from the parties. In January, we expect uh, our staff to produce a report that will be put out for stakeholder comment, and that will inform an ultimate decision on this phase, on the first phase of the docket. And, and I think what we're looking to accomplish is and summarize that review of holistic review of the existing framework, point out areas that, that may need a refinement or improvements, and then spend the next year working through the details, because this, this is absolutely an area where the details are critical to getting right. Um, so we've tried to you know, put out a very, uh, I think, thoughtful process, but one that also keeps things moving along. So we're 
close to halfway, and I think we've been trying to build, each workshop builds kind of sub, uh, from the substance material, but kind of in the importance of the topics that we're taking on in decision making. It seems especially important for this particular docket to invite comments, I mm -hmm. mean, to give an inclination and then invite comments from the stakeholders and for that matter, from the public, because it, is, it could result in a dramatic change, no? Correct, we've tried to be very inclusive. So all of the parties that have sought intervention uh, were admitted. We've held uh, the stakeholder workshops that were, that were and are open to the public there and broadcast those. We have the recordings uh, available that Olelo came. Uh, we invited others not, you know, that were not parties to come and present, including uh, some representatives of the financial community. So we heard a lot in the beginning, people speculating on what Wall Street thought of these kinds of impacts. So we said, why don't we invite representatives what a from great Wall Street idea. and what a speak great for themselves? Idea. Yeah. Uh, and so those, pre and all, so all the presentations are available to uh, our docket, uh, yeah, docket management system. So I think, yeah, we've, we've tried to make this a broad, inclusive uh, conversation so far, and we, we have professional facilitation by Rocky Mountain Institute. Oh, you do? And a great team of consultants supporting us on it, supporting the commission on it. So this, you know, this is definitely the highest profile, um, high, the, you know, our highest priority docket. Mm -hmm. So what, 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 why? Why is it the highest priority document? I mean, what are the, uh, what could the implications for the state, for the citizens of the state be? Uh, how far could this reach in terms of the way it changes our, our lives? Yeah, I think at its core, we're doing a review of the existing regulatory framework to make sure that you know, the kind of tools and mechanisms are align our electric, our investor-owned electric utilities with the outcomes that we seek from them. And so there's some very traditional stuff affordable rates, reliable service, but as I think everyone knows here, we've set some very ambitious clean energy goals um, and trying to make sure that the existing framework that's in place is better aligned. Uh, so I think, you know, the ultimate outcome here is is a better functioning electric utility that is, is closely aligned with what the state says that we want. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to have aspirational goals in 2045 but gee whiz, um, you got to take steps to get there. Always have to be mindful of, of action points and facilitating action points. So anyway, Marco, you have questions about the dockets? This is your big opportunity. Uh, well, I think Jay's kind of addressed, uh, I mean, from what I just heard, that the PBR is a fairly uh, big kid on the block right now, and, and, and you and Jenny and the next commissioner along with uh, so many of the energy stakeholders, including myself, see this as really a big, big deal compared to stuff that's not such a big deal. And I'm, I'm kind of curious, I've long wanted to ask you this kind of simple question, which is, as the Public Utilities Commission, there are a number of utilities that you guys are responsible for, energy, communications, uh, water, sewer, am I leaving something out? Transportation, I can't leave out transportation. Right, yeah. What, out of all the efforts that you, you and the staff put into all these dockets and all these issues. Uh, is energy the biggest, uh, the biggest chunk of the, the pie in terms of, of uh, stuff that you guys deal with? Yeah, I mean, I, I well, first, uh, if I remember it, there's 1,700 entities that the commission regulates. The vast majority of those are the motor carriers. Uh, but if we take this, uh, there's a couple angles on this to take, you know, the, the ones that we, regulate or oversee that, that, you know, have the broadest touch on residents and business uh, businesses' lives here, I think, you know, are collectively the energy utilities. So the four electric utilities, KIUC, and then the three investor, or, you know, Hawaii Electric, Maui Electric, uh, Hawaii Electric Light Company, uh, Hawaii Gas. So I think kind of from a, a impact on everyone's lives, standpoint, from a revenue standpoint, if you look at those collectively, they're well over $2 billion in revenue per year. That's just in what you know, they collect in revenues, but you know, if you look more broadly at you know, how those costs permeate through the economy, it's more significant, but also the other business activity related to it. So if you look at all the, the impact of new energy development in the state, 
Um, you know, there's there's going to be hundreds of millions of dollars in new investment in the coming years with all the major solar projects that are going online, as well as the you know the companies like Marcos that are involved in the customer side. So you know, when you look at this uh, collectively, they they are by far, um, you know, I'd say the the have the broadest impact, but. What I've also learned is, you know, that's not to neglect our smaller ones. We take some, a company like Young Brothers. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, anyone in the state is, has, you know, their their lives are affected by the operations of Young Brothers. And if you look at particularly our small water and wastewater companies, if you look at the list in, uh, you know, kind of their geography, most of the rural parts of the state are all served by these companies. So I don't try not to lose sight of these these factors also. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have a session here in uh, January, not too, that's only mm, three business weeks away. Do um, you think the PUC should get, uh, should, should want, should ask, I don't know if it does ask, um, but maybe, maybe it does, uh, for some kind of uh, bill, some kind of relief, some kind of help uh, in the legislative session? Is there anything pending that would have a direct impact, impact on what you do with the PUC? So I, actually, I'm not the, I'm not briefed on our most recent you know, kind of our pending legislative request at the moment. I know um, generally we've just tried to fight for our share of the revenue taxes that we collect. Uh, I think you know now that we have hired up for our staff, um, you know we're still living within our budget, but some times are a little tighter. We are looking to overhaul our document management system. And that's gonna that's a multi year project, I think probably to the tune of a few million dollars. So we're gonna need appropriation to support that. Um, but I you know, I I know my fellow commissioner will be the looking um, right now she's paying out of pocket all of her expenses to travel uh, here to Oahu, uh, and participate on the commission and there's been a, it attempts to address that in the past, and hopefully that will be successful this time. I hope, I hope they will, because it seems only fair. And we want to encourage neighbor island commissioners. I, I, it's always surprised me when I heard it. Um, the commission was fortunate in the past that you know, former commissioners Marita and Champley uh, did pay out of pocket to be here. So it yeah. was, you know, cost to them for their public service. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Marco will agree, right? Yeah, I too very much hope that it's something that the legislature will take up because, uh, you know, being a longtime resident of the, one of the neighbor islands, uh, I think I can conclude uh, with great certainty that there is a perception that there is a kind of an Oahu centricness uh, in this state. So anything that can be done to be able to uh, encourage and support people like uh, Jenny Potter, Mike Champley, Mina Marita. Uh, as, as commissioners from other than Oahu, I think is is in the public interest. So I, I hope that uh, I hope that moves forward. One more thing, Jay. Looking into the crystal ball, you know, you said we have a rate pace, a case pending now by the Hawaiian Electric Companies, I guess. Helco, um, yeah. Okay, and uh, Helco, right, not Big yeah. Island. Okay, and uh, they're asking for an increase, I guess. What I saw in the, in the civil beat. Um, three, three plus percent, Jay, for what, it what it's worth. A little plus. over $13 million in revenue increase. At the same time, you know, we're doing more renewables these days, and everything's pointing in that direction. And, and uh, it seems like what we've heard is that renewables are becoming cheaper, uh, that solar and uh, wind are actually becoming cheaper, which is from God in his heaven. This should happen. So uh, here we are on the way to 2045. Um, we have how many X years left to get there? Um, do you see, and you know, in your mind's eye as a commissioner, do you see that over time we'll be able to uh, hold uh, rates in general at the current rate, or will we be able to reduce those rates going forward because of the uh, reduction in costs of renewables, or will will other factors require us to increase those rates? I mean, what, how do you see it from where we stand now? Look, our our goal has been and continues to be to uh, push for a decline, I mean, kind of downward trajectory in rates and, and particularly in the generation costs. And the results are not public yet, uh, but this current on, current round of renewable solicitation, I think will, will help take us in that direction. 
Uh, it's important to note that at least in the past four to six months, oil prices have crept back up. And if you look at the avoided cost of energy produced on pretty much all the islands right now, it's above the cost of, uh, I think, pretty much all the recently approved renewable projects, but as well as uh, customer, uh, the export compensation for customer sited generation for all the post net energy metering projects. So this idea that renewables are cheaper than oil at the moment when oil prices are high, it's kind of across the board for all the kind of recent wave of projects. Um, but moving into the future, I think we, you know, help to really build on that. There are going to be additional costs along the way. Uh, there's going to need to need, we have requests in for uh, investment in the, in the electric utilities grids, help modernize them. Uh, so I think, it, and, you know, other types of integration uh, technologies. Energy storage is promising at the moment and has come in relatively cost effective, but we'll see how that continues to play out. But there's going to be other tools that we need to invest in. So the, I think the near term prognosis is, is actually quite positive. Um, but there's still, still for, I mean, we're roughly about a third of the way there to the 100% goal. You know, we're at 27% last year. Yeah. Promising. And, and Jay, promising Jay, is the operative word. Jay, promising. Jay Fidel, if I could, if I could add to that as well. Sure. And I'll shamelessly put a plug in for uh, Dave Bissell and his crew at KIUC in in the regard that since they have been uh, very proactive and aggressive, I would say, in, in replacing combustion generation with renewables and storage over the past years, they actually have been able to essentially flatten out the cost of electricity because they're bringing on cheaper renewables, replacing more expensive sources, i.e. oil, oil-based. So we do have a utility in the, in the state who has been able to, through their aggressive pursuit of cost-effective renewables, uh, put uh, essentially a cap on what, for the Hawaiian Electric companies, has been more of an upward trend if you look at the graph of the cost of Hawaiian Electric produced electricity. No, Marco's right, and if I mean when you speak with Dave and their board, I I think they're candid that they don't expect a radical drop in rates, but they're hoping to stabilize and maybe lower a little bit, and that's been their trend. And they've at least said that they don't expect to file for a rate case for quite a while. Hmm. That basically their savings on you know, buying the renewables versus oil can offset some of their you know increased in staff costs as well as any investment. Great to hear. It's all promising, isn't it? Absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here and excited in this job <laughs> if that wasn't the case. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Jay Griffin, yeah. PUC Commission. Good to see you guys so always. So nice to see you. Happy holidays. You take care, Marco. And Thanks very much, gentlemen. See you guys and, in the new uh, year. I just want to shamelessly put a plug in for you, Jay Griffin, that uh, I think it's great that as a but dedicated public servant that you have been and will continue to be, that you bring an enthusiasm and a passion and a dedication to your position, as so many others in the commission do. So, uh, uh, kudos to you, and, and thanks very much. Oh, appreciate it. It's a good, it's a good place to be in good time. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, thanks. guys. Aloha.